<sighs> What's going on, YouTube? It's James with Shot Hammer Fantasy Battle Reports, and I got a game at Friday Night Dice with Rick Fisher. And Rick is actually the guy who's running the Adepticon Big Brawl, um, and Rick is bringing out his ogres um, in a kind of a fluffy slash competitive try out your 3,000 point list game between him and I. Now, Friday Night Dice is not close for, for Dan and I. Dan Dan drove out there, um, and I tagged along. But um, it's about like an hour and a half, I think it is, uh, uh, drive out. So, you know, we don't really go that often when we do get a chance. Not only that, but I usually work on Friday nights. So uh, when I do get a chance, I'm going to go out there and uh, enjoy a game when I can. Um, so uh, I got a game in against Rick. Dan was playing, ooh, I think Dan was playing a dwarf player. I don't, I didn't, don't remember the name. Um, but he was playing this dwarf player, and uh, it's all I got in was this one game. Uh, after that, uh, I believe um, Jeff was playing. No, Dan was playing Rick. Jeff was playing Joe, and that's how it was. Anyways, so I only got one game in, but that's fine. I just came back from playing like 16 games or so <laughs> the the week before. So, and uh, not only that, you know, this is getting me a little bit uh, prep work for. Uh, Adepticon, Adepticon Big Brawl. Um, the thing is, uh, truthfully, I'm going to go ahead and just say this right now. With the 2400 point list I played at Brawlers and I played at Ocon, I felt very confident with what I had on the table. But when you go to 3000 points, and since there's a higher a point limit, yeah, I get more toys to bring out, but at the same time, so does all my opponents. So I kind of feel like it could be a bit, it could be a catch 22. It kind of, you know, like I had a a good setup of 2400 2500 points but now 3000 I'm like oh man what else are they gonna bring to the table so that's kinda what I was feeling here I was kinda feeling and not only this game I got a game against Dan and I got a game against Ian the, the week following and I felt the same way and I actually um, I struggled in both games um, I'm just gonna give you spoilers on that because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get those battle reports up because uh, Adepticon is literally tomorrow uh, so um, so I'm not sure I'm gonna get those battle reports up so I got a game against Ian, and Ian just kicked my ass. And uh, I got a game against Dan. And recently, I've been I've been giving Dan a run for his money. Uh, every every game uh, has been going orcs and goblins way. But uh, that game against Dan, I actually ended up getting only about a, a tie. And um, so it, it's making me wonder the, about the three thousand points more or less. Anyways, I'm rambling at the beginning of the video instead of the end of the video. <laughs> Check that out. But um. Let's go over what I brought to the table on this game, and brought, uh, what Rick brought, and what magic we got, and let us start with this picture here. I got the Gargantula, the the out of town tournament champion, the Gargantula, the A Rock. Uh, the A Rock has been extremely, extremely useful in every tournament that I brought it to. She has been just a major threat. It, you know, sometimes it looks like she's not doing much, but she's picking her points, and she just terrorizes when she can. Um, over here, I got two, two rock lavas, uh, two splatterers. I was working on uh, making that new one um, as we speak. And then um, over here, I got two git launchers. Um, I do have my unit of forest goblins with the mother's git, uh, mother's gift banner. Uh, this is still version. 0.11 uh, version 0.99 is not being played at Adepticon um, and then once uh, Adepticon's over I think the next tournament I have will be Blood in the Sun and Blood in the Sun will be version 1 so I'm skipping over version 0.99 altogether um, tournament wise um, over here I got a unit of 30 Nashers um, I got a unit of guess what guys the Feral Orcs are back the Foot Clan is back. The Foot Clan is coming out 30, I think like 26 strong. No, 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 this one's like 32, 33, because it's 3,000 points. So the Foot Clan has um, a giant block of just savages, and uh, they, they all have extra hand weapons. I am playing a BSB in there, and guess what, guys? Even though this video is coming out, to, you know what? I'm going to just say it, because by the time Adepticon comes around, uh, they're not going to be watching this video. So, um, maybe... I got my new BSB in there. My new BSB is actually an extremely stout BSB. He's a feral orc BSB with the armor of Gork and the war banner. So he's in a unit of savages. The savages do have bump -ba -da, the big stabadon. 
So, they're getting impact hits from the big Stabadon. They're getting impact hits for the plate to tuck tech or armor of Gork. And um, we and then that unit has three banners. That is some crazy combat res just from the boom charge in. You charge, call out the wall, you get a shit ton of attacks, and top it off, that that BSB is a feral orc BSB. He has an extra hand weapon, he has um, an extra attack for frenzy. The only thing I'm having issue with this whole unit is just the fact that they're frenzied. And because they're frenzied, they just go wherever the hell they want to go. And it's hard. You can't just kill somebody and turn around. You got to kill somebody and keep running the other way. So I'm still playing them kind of reserved just because of that. Um, over here, I got my uh, characters. I got Kabuto the Python in the front. He's a level 2 orc shaman with the big wog. Or big wog. Um, with wilderness. And um, he has the in this one I think he has the ring of fire I switched the ring of fire a couple times though uh, who has it but anyways he has the book to give him an extra spell in the back with the shotgun that is uh, Baron Longshot um, he has the skull splitter shotgun and in the far back you can see the green smoke that is uh, Baxter my shadow shaman uh, he is a level 2 shadow shaman no wait, actually this game I'm playing him as um, the green gods little gods so he's going to have an evil eye. And then you can see it on the right. I'll pull up a better picture of it. This is my ah, my Mangler, my Nasher Wrecking Team. Um, and uh, I literally, but I think last night, I just glued all the little guys back on. Because they pop off every tournament I take them to. They just pop off. But I take them to the tournaments and I glue them back on for the tournament. So that way, you, you, you know, it, it draws in more attention. Um, over here, I got my uh, giant, my uh, behemoth. And then I have my general, General Dread Iron Tooth. Uh, he's the real uh, voice in my army, even though uh, this guy right here steals the show. King Koopa. King Koopa has been stealing the show. He took he took the spotlight off a of chicken head, which I'm not a very big fan of. But King Koopa has been uh, extremely versatile, extremely resilient, and he has been an, a threat as is. Um, over here, I got a unit of chaff uh, wolf riders. Uh, and then I have a unit of uh, Tooth's Cross Borks. Borks. Cross Borks. <laughs> uh, the Tooth's Cross Borks are, uh, th for, for this game, is 14 of them. Um, and they just have crossbows and heavy armor. As for my opponent, Rick, he has, check this out. This is a very actually cool looking ice themed um, ogre army. And in the front, you can see it kind of blurry, is one saber tooth. Um, tiger and then uh, right here in this picture you could tell that he has a unit of four cannoneers um, he has his general right there on the right he has a ambushing uh, kin eater on the left his dogs in the front you can see another he has a butcher or slaughter master or whatever they're called now uh, on the left there he has another unit of, of cannoneers over here in the background you can see he has a unit of um, tribesmen uh, another unit of tribesmen and then he has these big rock. He has a rock horn on the right here, a cannon on the left, and then he has uh, over here a, a unit of about eight. Oh, I want to say iron guts, but I know that's not what they're called anymore. Oh, I can't think of their name, man. The tribesmen with the great weapons. I don't. I can't say that. I. I'm losing it. All right, and then in the back over here, he has another rock horn, and then he has his. Um, unit of Tusker Cavalry here. Um, as for magic, I got my level 2 is actually my Goblin Shaman with the Little Wog, so he has Gorkle Fix It and Evil Eye, and then he does have the Fireball. He has the Ring. Um, and then my level 2 with the book has Curse of the Wildwood, The Beast Within, Redwood Shaft, and I like all those spells. I actually really like Wilderness. Only one I'm not 100% on is the monstrous transformation. <sighs> Excuse me. The monstrous transformation. I'm just like meh when I get it. And then um, the the no shooting one. The no no shooting. The storms rage. Whatever storms end or whatever it is called. That one I'm not entirely. I mean, it, it is kind of a cool gimmick, but it's kind of a high value. So it's kind of like eh. eh. I don't care if I get it too much. Then I got a Shadow Miasma. Now I didn't have a. Uh, I do have a level one with a Shadow Miasma up, but. I forgot my uh, extra shaman model, so I'm just using like a random uh, banner holder for that. Uh, for my opponent, 
here. I can't make it out because I have it sideways until I edit it later and I can't get out without going out the program. It looks like he has Quicksilver Cloak. Um, he has the signature spell for um, alchemy and then he has the number two spell which again I can't even make it out. Um, now we've deployed standard battle line. Uh, Longshot is technically on a spider so Longshot could pop out uh, later on as a scout. The thing here is and we were talking about this, Dan was talking about it with me, is when my opponent has alchemy, he could really mess up Dread, and he could really mess up Koopa. Um, so that's very interesting to think about. Not really Koopa, because Koopa has a two-up board against uh, Fire um, Flaming, but Dread specifically, he, he could really mess up Dread. So um, I kind of lined up like this. I, put, um, I, I did put my uh, Forest Goblins in front of my Nashers, to kind of give him a screen from the shooting. He has a lot of lead belchers um, or cannoneers, um, which are more or less my threat. My threat right now is he's going to shoot my squig. My, uh, not my squig. Or, or he is going to shoot my squigs, but he's going to shoot my giant and he's going to shoot my Nasher wrecking team. So I'm a little worried about that. Plus his cannon is probably just going to shoot the crap out of my A-Rock. So I kind of have to do some screening. I am, I do out shoot him. I have four war machines. Four, and they're all deadly war machines, especially to uh, ogres. Um, and then I have—I uh, I know for a fact, looking across the table, I—I could outshoot him, outmuscle him, not in a straight-up fight. I need to weaken up his forces straight up. Um, but I'm not worried about my savages. My savages are just a deadly block. My foot clan's a deadly block, and the A-Rock can handle their own. Uh, so we're gonna see how this is gonna go. I did deploy my whole army off. Because I kind of already knew what I wanted to do. Um, as you can see, I took over the hill. I have my uh, crossbows on the hill. I have my savages behind them. Savages are just chilling there just in case whoever charges my uh, crossbows, could f the crossbows could flee. Um, I put Koopa in the forest over there. I put uh, the A-Rock over there on this side. I got this. The only thing I have to worry about now is those um, those two Sabertooths running into the Squig, the, the Nasher team. As you can see, I do have... My little, uh, besides Kabuto, you can see there's another Shaman sitting right between Kabuto and Dread. Um, and then for my opponent, you can see on this side, he has his Mornfangs on the right, the Tuskers on the right. He has his Cannoneers on the top there. He has his Rockhorn hiding behind the hill. He has his uh, Iron Guts just left to them. And then over here, you can see he has another Rockhorn, his Cannon, and his Sabertooth and more Cannoneers. So this side right here is interesting because I have to get rid of all his shooting potential on this side and I you know as I dropped first I realized I gave him the opportunity to just shoot the crap out of the A-Rock all he wants um, so I did go ahead and I planted a uh, long shot over here long shots on the other side of the hill so they won't be able just to shoot long shot and nobody could really charge long shot because it's just kind of far out of the way long shots deal is he has to kill that saber tooth that saber tooth is going to go ahead and kill my my Nasher right away and I just got to get keep that Nasher alive um, so I go ahead and I do vanguards, and vanguards, of course, I move up my uh, wolf riders over here uh, to chaff up his main fighting blocks. Um, we're going to go into turn one, and it's going to be turn one orcs and goblins. Now, turn one, I go ahead and I move up Koopa right away. I'm just like, you know what, Koopa doesn't care. He's going to try to distract the cannon, and that was the whole goal. Is Koopa's going to distract the cannon? Koopa could take a bunch of those gunshots and not worry. The cannon shot is eh, iffy, but if he could keep if he could get a lucky regen off from the cannon, he could uh, keep the A-Rock alive for a turn. And then as you can see, I did move up the Nasher Wrecking Team as fast as possible. I did move up my Giant just a bit. And not only that, somebody's Facebook calling me. Mom, I'll call you later, Mom. Anyways, um, uh, I move up my Forest Goblins, even though I'm taken out of the forest. Because I have the Shaman in that unit, and the Shaman needs to get in 24 inch range to just start blasting people. Plus, I got all the poison banner and the poison shooting and all that. So, I'm just going to start blasting people. So, I go ahead and I move them out of the forest. I'm not too worried about it. Um, they're going to be a threat to begin with. Magic Phase got 10 power dice. Woo! 10! What a start. I go ahead and I throw up a fireball, one ring, uh, one dice, and he lets it go through. So, I kill off one cannoneer with that. Doesn't do much. Then. Check this out. I go ahead and I throw up a couple dice on Gorkle Fix It. I get it off, and he's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm going to have to reroll sixes. Oh, well. So he gets it. I, he lets it go off, and I go ahead and I throw up a couple dice onto Curse of the Wild when I fail it. <laughs> and uh, that was about it. The next spell I throw, he, he uh, destroys it right away. Um, 
As for shooting, shooting, long shot goes ahead and bah, kills the damn dog. Puts the pelt on as a trophy, and he's going to move on. Uh, over here, the A-Rock's going to shoot its web launcher, and it drifts off and does absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, I go ahead and I do the first splatterer, hits these guys, and only does one wound total. And uh, go ahead and shoot the git launcher over here it, at the cannon, and it drifts off, does nothing. The second git launcher misfires, can't shoot. Um, can't shoot for the rest of the game. What the hell, man? Come on. Crossbow orcs, the crossborks. They're going to go ahead and shoot, and they kill off one of the iron guts. And uh, that's about it. That was, I think, a very impressive first shooting phase. The first shooting phase, I'm going through everything that has shooting. And uh, <laughs> Rick's like, oh my god, how much shooting do you have? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. Uh, it's going to start off Ogre's turn one. Ogre's turn one, he's going to go ahead and charge. I believe he charges his Ogre's into Koopa. And it was either Ogre's or the Chariot. And I flee Koopa, I believe. <clears throat> was it the... It might have been the Rockhorn. I don't remember. I don't know why Koopa's running. Because Koopa would have been able to take a fight like that. I think I just ran just for the hell of it. I don't remember. Anyways, over here he does go ahead. He, he goes ahead and he moves up all his units up on the hill and around. He's just maneuvering. He moves up his units this way. He's going to fail charge on Koopa because Koopa ran away. Magic phase. He got seven power dice. He goes ahead and he throws up... Uh... I don't even remember. He wasn't in range for most of the spells. That's what it was. So that that kind of mitigated what he had and what he did throw up. I just dispelled it right away. So he's going to go into shooting. Shooting these cannoneers are going to go ahead and shoot at Koopa. And they got six wounds off. Six. And Koopa fails two armor saves. And he fails two regens. And Koopa got wounded twice. First shot of the game. Come on, Koopa. What the hell did I buy you all that fancy armor for if you're just going to freaking get shot, you fat bastard? Alright, um, over here, his, um, his ogre with the freaking, uh, crossbow over here that just kind of, like, has it cocked up right there. He's going to shoot my giant and, bah, shot him right in the knee. Got two wounds off. That sucks, but that is it. That's all his shooting. He has nobody in close combat. It's going to start off my turn. Orcs and goblins turn to... And then we switch to this cool counter here. Orcs and goblins turn two. I decide I'm going to charge my giant in. My giant's just like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to fight this giant rock horn by himself and whatever. So he goes for it and he fails charge and he falls short like so. God damn it. My forest goblins decide they're not scared. They're going to go ahead and move up this way. And they're going to go ahead and um, face off. They're going to try to destroy that rock horn with poison. And hopefully just kill it. Uh, the Nashers are just chilling right behind it. And uh, I, as you can see, I kind of moved up my, my A-Rock. Didn't have to. I moved up my Nasher. My Nasher just ran all the way up. He's just like, fuck it. I'm going to go straight into the face of those Iron Guts. And uh, you can see Rick kind of just like eyeballing it. Like, oh, crap. Uh, Magic Phase. I got 10 Power Dice. I go ahead and I throw up a Fireball here. Kill off another Cannoneer with the Fireball. I go ahead and I throw up the Beast Within onto this unit here. And uh, I get it through. I go ahead and I do one dice on Shadow Miasma. He stops it. I throw up a couple dice onto Vindictive Glare or Evil Eye. He, I get it off and I shoot it right at these guys. Boom! Kill another one. Now, for the record, these guys did shoot on the last shooting phase and they rolled a bunch of sixes and he had to reroll them all because the Gorkle fixes. So that spell actually did come off in handy. Um, but now he only has one guy here left, and I don't think he cares much. I go ahead and I throw up a couple dice onto the uh, the Curse of the Wildwood, and I fail it. And um, which one was this? I believe this is my shooting phase. Shooting phase, I'm going to go ahead and shoot. I throw a bunch of uh, dice into his... Uh, a bunch of uh, the poison tomahawks into his giant rock horn. And look at this. Clock, 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 clock. Poison, 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 poison. Six poisons. Holy shit. He does armor save a couple, and he only has two wounds remaining. Two wounds remaining. This guy is dying. Um, over here, I'm going to shoot my uh, my splatter. My splatter goes off, and I aimed it at the big guy, and it drifts off and ends up killing one of the ogres in the background over there. Uh, Longshot here is going to start shooting at this, this uh, saber tooth. Does one wound here. 
Um, and then I decided to throw the other rock lava into his cannon. Does two wounds. Actually, I think I went for his rock horn and it drifted to the cannon. Did two wounds to the cannon. I'm going to go ahead and shoot these guys with the crossbows into his last cannon near here. Bah! Killed him off. And it's going to start off his turn. Ogre's turn two. Ogre Khan turn two. He's going to ambush. Oh, shit. Here it comes. Cannon Eater's coming for my git launcher. God damn it. Um, he charges a long charge from his cannon into Koopa. And I'm just like, Koopa's going to hold. Koopa doesn't care. And he's just like, all right. He's hoping the impact hits alone will kill him. Um, he charges. This is the, the tricky one. He charges his tribesmen on the left into my forest goblins. And I'm like, if I stand and shoot, he's going to charge his frosty into him as well. And then he's probably going to get two overruns, right? So I'm just like, uh, that, that's iffy, right? So... I decide I'm going to hold, and the reason why I'm going to hold is because if he charges anybody else, I could either flee or do the stand and shoot, and then he decides he's not charging anybody else. Now here's a really tricky situation, and I want to bring this up. I have to constrict my, my skirmish formation into a narrow formation because I'm getting charged by his tribesmen, right? But that now made a gap for the Nashers to be seen by his by his uh, rock horn. So he's going to charge the rock horn into my Nashers and he's going to charge his Tuskers into my Giants. Now the reason I bring this up, we're going to go over the other charges later, but I'll bring this up right now, is because in this picture here, his Iron Guts, or his Iron Guts, his Tribesman failed charge and his other two units did not fail charge. How does that work since my guys since they got failed charge, do my, did my skirmishers go back out to skirmish formation, not leaving that gap open for the Nashers? Or do I have to now adjust and move out of the way because the Nashers did get a charge in? So that's where my question comes. It's like, it's kind of a, uh, it was kind of like a hairy situation. Now the Giant did get charged. He did get flank, of course, like so. And this is just really ugly for the, for the Nashers. Um, over here. He charges, I believe, the Saber Tusk into them. I want to say it was the Saber Tusk. Uh, his, cannoneer, his cannon got in right here, hit him. Um, and then he goes ahead and does this thing. And I don't agree with it entirely, but at the same time, he didn't have much options. He's going to go ahead and have to take a hit here to get rid of my Nashers. So he puts his, his tribesmen right into my Nashers. Takes the hit. Nashers kill off three tribesmen total, and uh, three are gonna live. They don't panic, um, but he had to because he had no more chaff left. His his uh, kitty couldn't make it in one turn, and uh, I was gonna just chase the kitty down with a long shot anyways. But um, he uh, he just had to take the hit, which was pretty nasty, pretty brutal actually. <laughs> um, and then as you can see here, this is kind of how it looks. And as you can see, my my skirmishers aren't even in skirmish formation anymore. They're just crunched as he failed that charge up there. Um, over here, this this is kind of how it looks. He moves his rock horn closer. His cat's in the fight with the with my chaff. Magic face, he got two power dice. Oh, shit. So he goes in. Uh, I don't think he does anything with his two power dice. He's going to go ahead and shoot right here. Shoot all his cannons right at the A-Rock. Does Three wounds to the A-Rock. Ouch! Oh my god. Uh, over here, his impact hits alone kills off the... the. Oh, actually, it doesn't even kill him off. Or does it? I think it does. I think it kills off my uh, giant. I don't know what this dice is here. Kills him off. He's going to overrun. When he overruns, he hits the flank of my... Nasher herd. Now my Nasher herd, they're in trouble, man. They're in a deep world win of shit right now. They're gonna go ahead and attack. They they do one wound here. He goes ahead and gets all these impact hits. He does a shit ton of wounds and impact hits alone. And uh, I didn't even get the chance to kill off his his uh, giant Rockhorn. So his Rockhorn overruns into my general now. And he reforms his Morn Fangs, his Tuskers, facing my War Machines. That was just ugly. I didn't even have a chance. There was just no chance in hell that my Nashers got even to attack back. They got hit by impact hits, another impact hits. I think that Rockhorn does like 3d3 impact hits. And it was just 
nuts. They just he destroyed my units. I didn't even get a chance to hit, hit him or kill him or anything. I think I had a couple un uh, a couple Nashers attack back into the Rockhorn, but they did nothing. Um, over here, impact hits. He does four wounds with impact hits, and bam, Koopa doesn't care. Koopa armor saved all four of them, took it like a champ, and Koopa attacks back. Um, and I don't even think. Yeah, Koopa attacks back, does two wounds to him. Two wounds. Poison, poison. Oh, my God. His cannon's like, fuck this. He's running away from Koopa, and Koopa's just like, ah, ha, 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 chases, but he gets away. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Koopa catches him and eats him. Son of a bitch. Fucking Koopa, you fat, hungry bastard. You ate a cannon. You literally ate the cannon. You literally, how many times have I said he takes cannons for breakfast? Actually, that was chicken head. But now, he literally took the cannon and ate it for breakfast. All right, it's going to start off turn three. Uh, or, I'm sorry, we got this fight over here. The dogs, my dogs actually killed, the, not the goblins, the dogs killed the saber tooth. And it's going to start off turn three, orcs and goblins. Turn three, orcs and goblins. Koopa is charging in, but he can't charge in because... The, the Wolf Riders are in the way, so Wolf Riders charging in! And they're all going to go in together, and bam! They get into these freaking cannons over here. Um, and uh, I think that was my only charge, legal charge, because I really didn't have much else to do for charges. So, um, this is kind of how it looks right now, and I'm just like, shit. So I moved my Forest Goblins. I had my option. I could have just went for anybody at all. Anybody at all with the Forest Goblins. They had a free move right now because those two units ran past them so they could have ran to the side of the the tribesmen they could have ran for his iron guts they could have went for whatever but i know for a fact those mourn fangs those tuskers are in my way so i move them all behind the tuskers tuskers have a three up armor so he's gonna fail some armor checks i have 40 shots i'll be close range i'll be hitting on fives wounding on sixes if i get a good magic phase i'll get stronger strength to go through his armors so we're going to see how this goes, okay? So Magic Phase got 9 power, or 8 power dice. I go ahead and I throw up Curse of the Wildwood on that unit specifically because I don't want him taking out my Rock Lava. I fail that one. I go ahead and I throw up a couple dice onto the Redwood Shaft. I get that one off. BAM! Kill off one of the Tuskers with it. But that was it. The, the bolt died down right after that one guy. Actually, I think it's because I didn't have a flank. I had a front shot. So... I go ahead and I throw a couple dice on so the beast within. He stops that one. He knew it was coming. And now I'm going to go into shooting phase. And shooting phase, these guys throw 40 tomahawks and BAM! Kill off another one and do one more wound. I got like 9 wounds off on those or 10 wounds. And he throws the armor saves and he didn't get enough. And he killed one and did one more wound onto another. And he's just like, alright. So he takes his panic check. He fails the panic check. The Mordfangs are running away. Even though they're running towards my war machine, they're in a panic and they're running that way. That is awesome. I did exactly what I was planning to do there. It was just to hold them off and get them out of the way of my war machine. So my war machines could just start shooting at this unit over here. Bam! Rock Lava hits the unit, kills off one ogre. Going to go ahead and shoot my, uh, my Git Launcher. Misfire. God damn it! blows itself up these fucking war machines i swear to god all they're good for is chaff uh, i'm gonna shoot my cross borks my cross borks shoot at these guys over here kill off one more of his his random tribesmen that took the the mangler hit <laughs> over here his impact hits his impact hits 3d3 straight six he only gets one through one wound through on my general. My general goes back, destroys that rock horn. Did, actually, I don't even think it was my general. I think it was just Nidhogg. Nidhogg alone ate the freaking rock horn. That's awesome. This side is has cleared up all the issues that happened on this side. We did lose Nashers. We did lose the giant. But this side is pretty good. We're going to go on this side over here. Koopa goes, kills off one of the cannoneers. The cannoneers go with their quote end quote halberds, and they kill off three of my wolf riders. All right, my wolf riders attack, and I think they do like one wound or something like that. It's a draw. We're not going anywhere. Wolf riders are stuck. Koopa stuck. He did his wounds. We're all good. It's gonna start off ogre con turn 
three this is now as you can see I did move my a rock I moved my a rock for the main reason because his rock horn is coming closer so I moved the a rock just out of charge range of his rock horn um, because the a rock will take damage from 3d3 strength 6 impact hits. So I think it might even be strength 7 so I'm like ah, I'm not gonna fuck with that so here it comes he's gonna charge his kin eater here I'm gonna lose this war machine this war machine's broken anyway so it doesn't even matter um, he's gonna charge his tribesman here I've contemplated actually fleeing didn't matter if I fleed I would probably ran off the table so I'm like I might as well stand there and whatever just just distract them for a turn so might even do a wound or two here so he gets in over here magic phase he got 12 power dice oh shit and um he goes in i think he has the fireball he does have a fireball shoots it at the a rock does one wound he does another uh, hex onto my a rock i don't remember what the hex was it was an alchemy hex right and then i don't remember what else he did with the dice i think i might have stopped them on the dice uh, a spot or two so over here close combat impact hits kills off a bunch all his attacks are going kills off a bunch i have literally about like five or six guys left on that on the attacking but only one attacks back doesn't do a wound he's gonna chase me i'm gonna run and i run off the table and he chases me this way and that's it for those guys those four goblins they did all right though they did all right they caused the panic where they needed a panic over here the kin eater just ate my war machine that's about it and um they he overruns this way they're coming down to my savages they're coming down to my a rock a rock's hurting right now if the a rock charges into those iron guts she's gonna die because those iron guts are just way too many strength six attacks his generals there he's gonna cause a lot of damage to my a rock i'm not entirely sure how i feel comfortable using the a rock right now um over here koopa koopa killed two of those bastards two of them oh shit you fat bastard koopa he attacks back, tries to kill my dogs. He only kills off one dog. That last guy's going to flee. I chase him with the Wolf Rider alone, and Koopa actually turns around to face that rock horn, and this is how it looks. He's getting away. My Wolf Rider's chasing. Koopa turns around facing that rock horn. It's going to start off Orcs and Goblins turn four. Orcs and Goblins turn four. Um, Dread's going to charge these guys. These guys decide they're going to flee, and that sucks. Uh, Koopa charges the Rockhorn. Rockhorn's uh, immune to Psyche, I believe, or Frenzy. It's frenzied, so it can't do anything but take a rear or a flank charge from Koopa. This guy charges into the Ogre. The Ogre runs even further off the table. A Rock's gonna charge these two guys because these two guys are ch chaffing off the A Rock, and it just has to happen. And uh, it's it's gonna happen more or less. Um, over here, I reform my orcs to face the Kin Eater, even though I didn't feel like turning all the ranks around entirely I just figured I would if I need to but the kin eater is going to be a bigger issue than anything because it's unbreakable uh, magic face he got five power dice and uh, or I got five power dice what did I say he and I go ahead and I throw up all five dice onto the redwood shaft he lets it go through or I, I no he doesn't he dispels it he uses the dispel scroll and uh, the dispel pot of boils there <laughs> shooting phase these guys the cross borks they're gonna shoot at his iron guts and kill off one more long shots gonna shoot and hit the kin eater does one wound on the kin eater uh, the rock lava the broken lava is gonna shoot at his rock horn does one or I'm sorry shoots at this guy fails it drifts off does nothing uh, a rocks gonna start off close combat a rock does only two wounds he does one wound back um, and then the goblins go the goblins kill off the other guy and do two more wounds that is insane the goblins did way more damage than the a-rock did by herself koopa holy shit at this time koopa's in this fight with the rock horn rick's talking about it i'm talking about it i'm like koopa doesn't care and so Ko he goes ahead and does all these attacks on koopa he does actually i think these are my attacks i might say these are my attacks nope these are his attacks these are definitely his attacks he's attacking Koopa and he gets off six six wounds onto Koopa six and I just said it with all the utmost confidence I'm like Koopa doesn't care and I roll all six dice and I armor saved all six dice Rick was like are you fucking kidding me I don't give a fuck what that guy has he should 
die. He has one wound left, and he got hit with six strength, six hits. One. One should have gone through. Koopa goes back, does one wound. I don't even think he did one wound. I think it was just a charge in the flank, right? Onto his rock horn. He rolls for the stubborn check, and he fails it, like on a 10 or 11, and the rock horn runs away. Koopa chases. Koopa doesn't catch it. Um, and, uh, basically, it's going to be his turn, Ogre Khan's turn four. He's going to charge in here. His rock horn runs off the table, and right here, Rick loses it, and he's just like, I'm done. <laughs> he's like, my dice are working against me. I mean, his dice were really rolling bad. He rolled, like, double ones on a magic phase. He couldn't, he couldn't wound Koopa at the end. It was a big Orcs and Goblins win. <laughs> Oh, man, but, uh, you know, uh, that kid eater was going to be an issue. Honestly, if Koopa didn't come back for this rock horn, this rock horn would have been a big issue for me because I, I honestly, I did not like, usually I use that to my advantage where the cross borks are just chilling in front of the savages and a, a, a close combat army will come up towards me. But since this rock horn was coming from a flank side, uh, you know, from my flank, it, I didn't I didn't give myself enough time to reposition and because I didn't give myself enough time to reposition um, he's going to just kind of uh, he would have been able if the kid eater would have held my savages for a turn I would have been shit out of luck that rock horn would have came in rammed in not even have to attack all my guys because his kid eater would have been in like in the middle so it would have gave me just a quarter of the attacks and his rock horn would have been stubborn and just out just, just destroyed my savages over time um and that's probably was his best bet and then his his iron guts never had to get into combat now he him having to eat the nasher wrecking team was pretty uh ballsy of a move it cost him that unit i think um the only other option i would say would have just been to fireball him but he was i don't think he was um confident that the fireball would have killed him so he just figured he would just take take one on the chin and uh throw a whole unit into the the nasher team um his cannon i think did try to shoot my, my a rock the first round and that was it after that it tried to deal with koopa and koopa koopa is by far yeah i want to say by far the mvp here uh because koopa killed the cannon killed a unit of cannoneers and killed that rock horn he killed the whole left side of the table uh long shot took care of the chaff which was really important and i do believe uh long shot has earned a, a rightful spot on my army as a mainstay until they take away my magic shooting weapons but because of that specifically i think that um long shot uh, especially against ogres, because ogres is one of those armies where they have these cheap 35-point pigs, just uh, or cats that just run right into my nashers. Long shot, cut, pop, pop, and there's only usually two or three of them, so he could kill all three of them before uh, they become an issue. So he, it really becomes an issue for my ogre opponent to deal with that nasher wrecking team. The nasher wrecking team is a pretty cool unit. Unfortunately, it's extremely situational because it's so hard to use when you have an opponent who has a lot of chaff. Uh, an example was the game that I played against uh, Dan that I don't have a video up for. He had three units of Elaine Reavers and two Eagles to throw right into my nasher, and it didn't matter. And then the game against uh, Ian that I didn't put up, um, I actually accidentally fleed into my nasher, and it just destroyed my own guys. <laughs> But um, the the I, I want to use the savages uh, because I do feel like a lot of those games at Ocon and Brawlers that I did lose combat, the the savages would not have lost combat if the savages would have charged in, and just that one BSB difference, that one BSB difference will destroy, and I mean destroy units by himself because he has impact hits tough six ward save um heavy armor extra attacks extra initiative he's plus two on banners by himself um and again the game against dan i'm not going to put it up and the reason why i'm just referring to it uh versus uh 
putting it up is because I am going to go to Adepticon, and by the time I do Adepticon, I should do the Adepticon videos instead of my battle reports pre-Adepticon. Um, but uh, but uh, that game alone uh, against Dan, I he chaffed up my Feral Orc block, and I decided to charge the BSB out of the unit, and that he would have had a charge, a flank, two banners, impact hits, that's already at like five if the impact hits was one, and not including the five attacks he gets. That's insane for one BSB. That's insane combat res. But, um, he failed the charge. <laughs> uh, I was trying. I was really trying. I was pulling in there. But, um, besides that, um, I enjoyed this game against Rick. Uh, Rick was a bit frustrated towards the end just because, uh, you know, Koopa just destroyed his left side of the table and he was really he he was really cussing out Koopa. <laughs> um he uh I think he has a really beautiful army and top it off uh Rick uh spoiler alert guys spoiler alert um I was uh I'm I'm at home I'm checking my my emails and I got an email from once bitten himself saying surprise he's going to be at Adepticon and uh so he's coming on over. He's in a, we're reversing roles this time. He's staying at my place, and uh, he he asked if he could if anybody had a loner army for him to play at Adepticon. And uh, Rick here, the, my opponent right here, uh, was willing enough because Rick actually has a Beast Herds army. So Rick uh, Rick and Chad have been talking, and they're gonna go ahead and uh, have uh, him use his Beast Herd army. And uh, that'll be pretty cool, and I'm I'm interested to see how uh, Once Bitten does at Adepticon in Chicago. Um, not only that, um, I I'm I'm really excited. This is going to be really insane tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. This is all going to be really insane. I got a uh, big brawl tomorrow. Oh shit! This is this is the big show tomorrow? I I don't know why I felt like it was the tag team tomorrow. Tomorrow is the big brawl. Three big games of three thousand points. Uh, Friday is singles, and that's four games, 2,400 points. And then Saturday is the tag team with my brother. Now, I got to make up a fluff story about tag team. I do have chicken head there, so chicken head makes fluff a lot easier for me to make. <laughs> um, besides that, um, besides that, I have, uh, I'm trying to think here. You know, uh, Adepticon is, it, it, it was uh, my mine and my brother's first big tournament last year, and uh, I know that it might be a, a big shocker to a lot of you guys because it looks like I've been painting and doing stuff forever. I have been painting forever, my army. I've never played a big tournament like an actual competitive tournament until I went to Adepticon, and that was last year, 2014. Um, uh, long story short, I bought a ticket for me and my ex-girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend is my ex-girlfriend, <laughs> and uh, I ended up having to go to Adepticon saying, hey, can my brother use it instead? My brother has a Skaven army, and they kept on telling me, no, 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 what if she shows up? I'm like, dude, she's not showing up. <laughs> so they let my brother play. It was our first tur big tournament. We got our asses kicked. We didn't know anybody. We didn't know anybody there except for like one person who was playing at the 40k tournament. So it was pretty interesting. We met a lot of people that day. I met Jeff Orzak that day. Uh, we met Adam Trunzo that day. We met a, a couple other people that were there. Um, but it really kind of introduced us to the tournament le uh, scene. And uh, it's a hell of a tournament to go to. So I'm really looking forward to going to it tomorrow a year later and like now I know a lot of the people who are there because I've gone through tournaments throughout the whole year and met a lot of these people and you know and I'm more um, in tune with the Chicago scene not only Chicago but this is this is a nationwide tournament these people come from all over to play at Adepticon um, and I'm not even sure how many people are, are uh, scheduled to be there um, the one thing I do feel like it's a little like uh, kind of sucks is that the single tournament's on a Friday, not a Saturday or a Sunday. Because if it was on a Saturday or Sunday, if it was a two-day tournament like last year, um, there would have been a bigger turnout. But the reasoning for it was because um, they were just trying to get Ninth Age in the door. Um, Ninth Age was a, a originally turned down, and, and uh, I believe somebody who's playing Age of Sigmar was actually trying to keep Ninth Age out of Adepticon. Um, and I know that's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of the people who play Ninth Age have a bigger showing and a bigger support. I believe we outnumber uh, the people who are going to uh, Age of Sigmar there 
but I don't really know. I don't know all the facts, but I, that's what I've heard, is that there's more people signed up for Ninth Age than Age of Sigmar at Adepticon. Um, I don't know um, how many people specifically are, are scheduled for any of these tournaments. I do know that I, if I don't sign up for Tag Team right away, I'm not going to be able to get in with my brother, so I have to make sure that this, like, the first thing I do when I get there tomorrow <laughs> is sign up for Tag Team. Um, but... Uh, besides that, guys, I, I know there's a lot of information going on right here. Um, I am looking forward to um, doing my best, and I'm hoping out of three tournaments that I'm signed up for, or two and a half right now that I'm signed up for, that I come home with at least one prize. I, if you guys haven't noticed in my other video when I have my prize wall, there's one empty spot. I'm leaving it there specifically for at least one Adepticon award. And I don't care what Adepticon award it is. I, it could be best orcs and goblins. It could be best, uh, you know, player's choice. It could be best painted army. It could be best general, best overall. I don't care. I just need one. I need to come home with one, guys. That's my goal. So I'm going to play my ass off tomorrow. And I'm going to hope to God my savages don't let me down by running away. I did play those two games against Dan and Ian. And they really chaffed up my savages. And it just reminded me what, why I stopped playing savages to begin with. Um... But um, the way I was playing at Ocon and Brawlers, I didn't need to do that. I did not need to charge unless it was an opportunity. And I have to remember that because when I have my savages, it just kind of gives me this feeling like I should go for it. I should go for it. And I don't. I need to sit back and just let them come to me until I had a perfect charge opportunity with those savage bastards. Anyways, guys, I'm not really rambling. I'm actually just talking strategy and talking about uh, goals and talking about everything else um, with this game. Rick, thank you for being a good sport, and uh, thank you for helping out Once Bitten with an army. Um, I don't know if you guys are actually going to have the army, or yes or no, but uh, I'll find out by tonight or tomorrow. Uh, besides that, guys, I hope the next time you see me, I will secretly be hiding the fact that I have an award and I will be waiting to tell you at the end of the tournaments. Anyways guys I'll see you in the next video the next video will be Adepticon Big Brawl Round 1 and I'll see you then. If you guys haven't hit like and subscribe, hit it already I don't know what the hell you're waiting for. I will uh, definitely be putting up another army uh, armies on parade video um, I'll probably have a little bit more exciting stuff to talk about while I'm talking about that video <laughs> And um, if you guys uh, would like to support my channel, donate anything to my channel, you could always go to my YouTube ch channel page. There's a support icon on the right side. You click on that. You could donate whatever amount you feel like uh, necessary for my commentary and my videos. It would help me pay for some batteries, and it would help me pay for some of these damn tournaments I'm going to. Guys, I hope you've been enjoying these. I'd love to hear feedback. Leave it down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.